Okie dokie, let's assemble our fearless midweek panel of MPs in the true blue conservative corner. Stella Ambler of Mississauga representing the Orange Wave and DP MP Ginny Sims of Delta, Richmond. Something. Newton, North okay, Delta. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> and uh, no relation to Ginny. We have our Sim City duo completion here, the Rock Scott Sims for the Liberals. Welcome to you all. Well, it's nice to be here. I'm in good company. You are. You're having you know, fun with this group, except, you know, when you're between Stella and Ginny, you know, it gets it, loud. It's still fun. It's still <laughs> all right. fun. It sure is. Let's talk about what's going on in there. And, you know, I listened to Brad Wall's interview, and I almost think that he's got a point here. He's going to start by pushing for the abolition of this place. Can Stephen Harper, in your view, Stella, save this whole thing for the conservatives by just saying, all right, I've heard enough, let's abolish it, and start pushing in that direction? I know he's got to wait for the Supreme Court, but he can come down on one side or the other pretty firmly. I think uh, he's been, we've all been saying the same thing for a long time, um, starting with the Prime Minister, and that's that, uh, you know, we want to, we've wanted to reform the Senate for a long time. Right. Um, kind of given up on changed, that, though. Oh, no, not at all. I, I think we do have to wait, as you said, for the Supreme Court ruling right. in, uh, uh, in November. We're all, I think, anxiously awaiting at this point. But for now, I think what... What could be done now to, you know, in this situation, is to make sure, and, and I'm hoping that the Senate does vote. We were hoping that they would vote yesterday um, uh, on this, on the issue of, uh, of, of the senators and suspending their pay and so on, suspending them without pay, uh, because that's what Canadians want, right? That's what, you know, people who pay taxes in this country are getting tired of being ripped off and they're they're you know they listen to Duffy on they listened to him on Monday um, he sounded kind of uh, to in you know to me sounded like a bit of an infomercial huckster you know um, just wait there's more hang on you know I mean it was just ridiculous and um, I think Canadians are tired of that and they you know they want him to admit that he's what he's done is wrong and frankly it would be nice if he would just resign but I guess that's not gonna happen not gonna happen Scott what's your take on all this where's where's the the, the Harper Achilles heel, if you will, as you guys are taking shots at him. But wait, there's more. That's <laughs> <laughs> at least two checks, right? Well, that's right. There are at least two <laughs> checks. Well, it seems like as it unfolds, there are more questions than there are answers. And it seems like every time that the prime minister tries to put out an answer, the answer be just convolutes the whole issue even further. Let's go back to the point that was made about the fact that these, these uh, three senators should be removed uh, based on what they've admitted so far or based on what little evidence they have. What about the MPs in the House right now? There's one, actually, right now, that's out of their caucus. Should that MP be removed as well? So all these questions now are right. They shouldn't or they should? You know what? <laughs> that's not... Now, the Senate is doing one thing. It's a motion that's to right. remove these senators. I mean, this is just not the same thing. There was an well, audit. Actually, it is there was, the same no, it's thing. not, because there was, there, was, there was an audit that determined there was wrongdoing. Everyone but, knows that there was wrongdoing. They paid back expenses. They wouldn't have done that if they so, weren't de facto admitting they had done something wrong. So you're not so comparing it, apples to apples. Good I try, think, though. Don't hear that I would like to say a couple of things. Of course. And first of all, let me say that changing the subject and the motion in the uh, Senate is not going to fix the issue. The real issue is what happened, when it happened, and who was involved. This is about the PMO. This is about what happened in the Prime Minister's office, who said what, when the checks were written, how many checks, who knew, few, too many, nine, ten, one, two. It's all of those questions, and right now what we're talking about is the credibility and the believability of the Prime Minister himself and the office, and we're not getting any clear, straightforward answers. I think it's time to put the facts out and then let's proceed. Well, the, the facts, according to Stephen Harper, are out. And I guess that still begs the question, uh, Stella, I want you to answer this one, because you pay for legal fees. To get a guy out of a predicament that is now considered so inappropriate that he's not only thrown out of the caucus, but is being told he's out of the Senate without a paycheck for at least six months, probably two years. There's an inconsistency there, isn't there? Well, I think in your question, you said it. At the time, he was a member of the conservative 
caucus in the Senate. He was a conservative senator. It's very, it's quite common. All parties do it. We pay for uh, legal fees uh, where it's the decision is made that, that it's an appropriate, it's appropriate to do so. Uh, we saw it today in the House of, we heard today in the House of Commons. We were reminded that uh, that the NDP leaders' legal expenses were paid for um, by the by Quebec Liberal Party. The, yes, by um, a, a few years back for a, a not and only legal what? fees, <laughs> not only legal fees. Changing the channel. I'm, well, this time I'm comparing <laughs> apples to apples because well, I'm saying all so. parties. <laughs> it's it's common practice for all parties to do that. At this point, give me an example when at, we did it. I don't know of any uh, off the top the, of my head, but I'm sure there there are parties that sit on all sides of the house and. But if it, you're still not changing the, the channel, isn't going to. You're work. asking the about paying is, legal fees. The fact is, the prime minister's office. There are things that happened in that office, and there's more confusion now than there was three months ago. First there was one check, then now there are two checks, maybe more, who knows. First only Nigel knew, nobody else, then maybe a few other people knew. It's one thing after another, and there's one thing I know about Canadians. They just want the truth. They want to be told exactly what happened and who was involved. And this trying to change the channel all the time and trying to uh, commandeer events just before the convention to put closure on it, is not going to do it. Having a vote the, in the, the Senate thing, the, is the other not thing going Canadians to solve it. The want is they want their taxpayer dollars respected and they don't Absolutely. want people who have been already been found. That, right? well, you know, if they, if they worked the anywhere what? other than the Senate, they would have been fired. So let's and so, get rid of the Senate. And where were the Conservatives well, and the Liberals the when the NDP brought a motion the forward? Senators. When the NDP brought forward a motion that Senators could not use their budgets to travel to raise funds or for partisan okay, activities. Let me ask you a question. There were there NDP members in Labrador during a by-election. How did they get there? Under whose expenses? Well, what we're talking about here... No, let's what get I'm to... talking about is, is money being spent to go to a place and campaign. How did those NDP members end up in Labrador, MPs, many of them? Did they MPs, do it on their own? MPs are What's elected. They, with they go out to do other business. We're talking about <laughs> senators who are appointed and are basically supposed to be non-partisan so, and, according to the Prime Minister, have nothing have nothing to do with him because they're an independent okay. body. I but feel you know I'm what? losing control here. I'm I losing control. I think <laughs> abolition is the only answer. And how are you going to do Just, that? What's the, okay. Which province? Sims, I know you used to be in what? media. Now, I'm in charge of this show, okay? My apologies. <laughs> if you call within Which the next Sims 20 minutes. <laughs> this is him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to get one thought from you, because I know where the NDP stands, and I know where the Conservatives stands on the Senate. What do the Liberals stand for exactly? What's your policy? We, we want to reform the Senate as well, just like everybody else does. But the problem is, right now, we're going to wait for the Senate or the, uh, the Supreme Court to make their decision. And then beyond that, what, what we don't want to get into is to open up the Constitution for everybody to get involved. She says she wants to a abolish the Senate. Well, maybe you this, need no, seven out of ten provinces well, to one, do that, and maybe one. ten. One. So, but they, have never, they haven't put forward a plan plan on how these provinces are going to agree to this. We already know several provinces had said no. Now, because, and you know what, God, God forbid I agree with Pierre Polyev, but he did make a point today when he said it's just, one for just a hashtag. Mm -hmm. okay. they just, it, that's all they want this I'm for. All, it's more saying. gimmicky you than anything what? else. There's I, no, they, 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 they can do one second. They, they can use money. us with not having a plan. They don't have a plan about this either. Speaking of plans. Yours is a non-plan. Stella, you're going to Calgary uh, this week. How much damage is this Senate scandal going to do to the mood of that convention? Uh, listen, I'll say this. I think that um, I, I think that there will be some concern, and I'm hoping. Um, I believe that our delegates and that our party faithful understand that this is, um, well, and Jim Flaherty called it a distraction. Um, I want to make sure, I'm hoping to make sure that this weekend we talk about the things that really matter to Canadians, um, you know, jobs, job creations, economic growth, all of those things, the Canada-Europe free trade and historic free trade agreement. Um, I think that there will, of course, there's going to be some talk about, uh, there's going to be talk about the Senate. <laughs> I and, think the uh, uh, European I, Union workshop is going to be a little underrepresented on the floor, but we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> all, right. all right, I got to run. We're out of time. Thank you all. See you in Calgary. Okay, coming up.